the one and only Dr. Peter McCullough, the wellness company. Peter is uh, their chief scientific officer. Dr. McCullough, thanks for being with us. Thank you. Great to have you with us, doctor, as always. Butting a thousand, by the way. Hey, Pete Rose just got in Hall of Fame. Shula's Joe Jackson just got in the Hall of Fame. They'd have bat a thousand. Why isn't Peter McCullough in the Hall of Fame? Because he's batting a thousand, has yet to make an out. And here he is with us again. Dr. McCullough, uh, I knew you played baseball. I know you did. And I know you probably batted a thousand. Let's get to uh let's get to Joe Biden's prostate advanced cancer. What's what's happening here? How did this happen so fast? But I tell you, John, I went back and read Dr. Kevin O'Connor's medical report from February of 2024. No mention of any abnormalities in the prostate, no mention of an elevated blood PSA. Now we learn just uh, 13 months later that prostate, uh, that Biden has Gleason grade nine, which is the most aggressive, most invasive cancer is already obstructing urine coming out of the bladder, and it's already spread to his bones, probably the pelvis and the lumbosacral spine. John, this is terrible. It meets all the definitional criteria for being a turbo cancer. Remember, Biden took publicly took six COVID-19 shots, and we have a great concern that a cancer that's at this pace, that goes from essentially not being there in February of 2024 to being widely metastatic, uh, is basically cancer on overdrive, appropriately termed turbo cancer. So, okay. I mean, I'm just going to ask this question straight out. The medical release that he had from his doctor at the White House last year, was it, uh, did they miss something? Was it a mistake? Or did they cover it up? Ronnie Jackson, uh, you know, former uh, doctor for President Trump just tweeted out that, you know, presidents should receive the highest standard of care. And he implied something was missed. But I looked at Kevin O'Connor's report from February of 2024, no mention of the PSA or the prostate exam. Uh, but I would have a hard time believing that that was skipped. That's just part of the general exam. O'Connor's a family medicine doctor. Then in the summer of 2024, th there is a big uh, neuropsychiatric, neurocognitive uh, sets of evaluations and lots of comments regarding this blended uh, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's syndrome that Biden has. So no, I don't think anything's missed, John. I just think he has a very rapid, uh, aggressive turbo cancer. That's, uh, it's unfortunate uh, what this, this whole thing from the dementia, the Alzheimer's, now the cancer, uh, the guy was really too sick and too old of people to govern. It's just, it's, I mean, I don't know, is anybody ever gonna be held accountable for the lies that we were told? Well, I can tell you the White House physicians need to do a much better job. I mean, you know, these presidents are older. I mean, even look at Trump, he looks robust, but he's approaching age 80. You know, I have many patients like this in my practice and I think we have to be honest with America because the health of the commander in chief, you know, really matters to the entire nation. Having said that, you know, we have an aged Senate, you know, a younger House of Representatives. But good Lord, uh, you know, we 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 look at uh, look at Dianne Feinstein and Mitchell Mitch McConnell and others. Obviously, health is failing. We'd like to see our leaders and their families make reasonable decisions. So these individuals are not in leadership roles when they're in an advanced stage in illness. I agree with you 100%. Uh, there's got to be an accounting for this. There's a lot of things here that there's got to be an accounting for. This is just uh, one of them. You've got an upcoming congressional hearing, Dr. McCullough. Tell us about that. <clears throat> May 21st, Wednesday, 2 p.m. Eastern. I'll be in the U.S. Senate. And this is going to be a formal hearing on COVID vaccine, myocarditis, and other serious adverse events, but, but largely uh, probing the CDC and FDA cover-up of myocarditis. They, they intentionally delayed critical information that we needed to uh, you know, advise patients on the risk of heart damage with the vaccines. 
They delayed it at least for months. And you know, there's still to this day is no black box warning. When a drug or a vaccine can cause a fatal side effect, John, it must have a black box warning. To this day, neither Pfizer or Moderna have a black box warning saying that myocarditis from the vaccine can cause death, and it clearly can. How widespread is the COVID-19 cover-up? It's vast. It, John, it's worldwide. It, it, there is a vast cover-up for this because the vaccines were advanced too quickly. They were pushed too hard on the general population. Now we've realized that they're, they're grossly unsafe, ineffective, and all the leaders behind the vaccines will not come forward and admit they were wrong. Uh, President Trump pushed hard for these vaccines. Uh, is this something he should address? He should. If I was in the role of the president or uh, HHS secretary or FDA commissioner, I, I can tell you, John, I would have pulled these off the market in December of 2020. We now realize even the FDA deliberations on December 10th, 2020 were based on flawed data, but we should have shut this down very early so we could have saved lives. Remember, we can always treat COVID-19. It was progressively getting milder. People developed natural immunity. There was no medical necessity or clinical indication for global mass vaccination. But they made billions and billions of dollars off it. It was the most profitable product for these companies, but sadly, it was at the expense of the health of Americans. It's unbelievable. Um, when you talk about myocarditis, you, you, you talk about it a lot, but explain exactly what that is for our audience. A paper by Crossan and colleagues found Pfizer Moderna vaccine messenger RNA is physically in the human heart, John. And then it starts to uh, deposit the spike protein in the heart. That's been found by Bowmeyer. Uh, and, and other uh, researchers. So we know the messenger RNA and the spike protein is in the human heart. By the way, the virus is not in the heart. The virus can deposit in the lining of blood vessels, but the virus has never been found in the human heart at autopsy. So the virus does not cause myocarditis, but in fact, the vaccine does. The heart cannot tolerate any inflammation. And when it does, the heart can have a sudden cardiac arrest or develop heart failure. This is just, it's just horrible what has happened here. And, and still, there's still not an accounting for this. There's still, still, if you're talking about it, people are still like, oh, you're anti-vax. No, I'm anti getting a vaccine that is going to potentially give me a heart attack. That's, that's what I'm opposed to. This is unbelievable. Um, how do you mitigate these side effects? I know you've come up with a couple products in the wellness company I take one of them because I took the vaccine. So does, so does Anne, mm -hmm. the spike detox. Tell us about that and how that can make a difference. Ultimate spike detox is the lead product. It's the highest dose combination of natokinase, bromelain, curcumin, clinical grade. It's best to support paper with people through detoxification after the vaccination. Very important prescription drug is needed in virtually every case of suspected or actual pericarditis, and that's colchicine. It's an over-the-counter uh, it's a uh, prescription generic drug, but colchicine is mandatory for at least a year. Uh, also, wellness company heart support or healthy heart supplement. I you know, recommend uh, in all my patients. And then some patients with advanced disease need drugs to actually treat heart failure. But we'd hope that ultimate spike detox and prescription colchicine would be as far as we have to go to clear up most of these cases it takes about a year or more. You know, whether it's a spike detox or whether it's the um, medical emergency kit, the contagion kit that we have, the way that you have transformed medicine is pretty incredible for those of us like myself and Anne and my family that have embraced it. And I urge everybody to go to twc.health slash Godzilla, twc.health slash Godzilla, promo code Godzilla, you're going to get 10% off. Here's the thing. If you took the vaccine like me, many of you have, I mean, 80, what was it, Dr. McCullough, 84%, 80, 83% of all Americans took at least one shot, uh, like Ann and I did for various reasons. We were, you know, told we couldn't travel, told we couldn't do this, that. And uh, many of us did that. Um, the spike protein, you, you want to be sure that this thing is out of your system. So just go to twc.com health slash Godzilla, 10% off. And then tell us the exact uh, 
product to buy. What is it? <clears throat> it's called the Ultimate Spike Detox. I would suggest that plus heart support. Uh, then anybody who took the vaccine, they don't have any symptoms, but they're worried. Uh, you know, I suggest doing this. Uh, I didn't take the vaccine, John, but I had COVID three times. The last one was pretty severe. I'm taking it myself. I'm not going to take any chances with a blood clot or problems after COVID. And people shouldn't take it. You shouldn't risk themselves after COVID or the vaccine. Horrible. The cover-ups that went on under Biden uh, for COVID, the censorship. I mean, we're going to spend a long time fighting our way out of this. Thank you for being with us, Dr. McCullough. Look forward to seeing you on Wednesday at your hearing. You're on the John Fredericks Media Network. We're going to be right back. TWC, TWC.health, TWC.health slash Godzilla, promo code Godzilla, 10% off. Thank you, sir.